Hello, today I am going to show various ways of making shapes with instant static meshes. First create a actor blueprint class. Once you are here, make sure you are in the viewport tab, so we can add a component called instance static mesh. You can select the shape you want from the static mesh menu, I will choose this cube, as you can see nothing appears, that is due to having no instances at the moment. We can come down here to add instances and move them around if we wanted to, each transform will be different, but as you can see, this is inefficient and really not that useful, instead, we want to use maths to generate the shapes. Alright, at this point you can choose where you want to do your shape, as I just want to show you how to make it, I will be doing it in the construction script. First you will need a for loop, this is so we can add in multiple instances, the last index is the amount of instances you want. In order to actually add in an instance, you will need to get the instance static mesh and get the add instance node. First, we are going to do a grid shape, check the description for the shape's timestamp. We can now add in a make transform, a grid, has an x and a y, or well columns and rows and we need to have spaces in between them so we'll need those as variables. We will then get them onto the graph and multiply them by a float which is the spacing. Now, you can split the struct or make vector in order to give it the x and y. We have spacing between columns and rows but we now have to make sure it is in a form of an equal sized grid. We first get the row and increment it, which just means add it by 1. We then have to check when it can make new columns. We will need the number of cubes we want, so we can just promote it the last index of the for loop to a variable. We can now use this variable over here. Drag off that node and do an int to float and square root it. Now turn it to an integer by truncating it. Now once that is true, we can increment the column and set row back to zero. An optional feature is adjusting the Z which will change the height, sometimes it is nice to make it random. You can use a random integer or random float in range. However, it is more organized if the Z was just a constant number like just zero. Finally go to the viewport and see what happens, adjust the variables, mainly the spacing. Don't change rows and columns as it won't work. Also change mesh itself and see the results. Now that is grids and also different height grids done. We will be moving on to circular style shapes. We will be starting off with the for loop and number of instance, we will also use the instanced mesh to add it. We will need the make transform node too. Now, it is very important to do int to float first, otherwise the calculations would not be correct, and the results won't be nice. As floats use decimals, dividing it will be more accurate rather than being rounder to a whole number. Now, we need to multiply it by 360 as that is the angle of a full circle. Now this is a bit complicated, but we need to get the cost degrees and sine degrees. I have put a text up here showing the calculations. We then multiply this by radius. We also need to do the rotation of each instance and that is simply getting from the 360. We are pretty much done, you can adjust the radius and see how it works. 
and like I showed in the grid one, we can also adjust the Z. One other variable is multiplying by 360. That 360 can be adjusted if you wanted, it won't make a circle but will make some other weird shapes. Anyway that is all for the circular type, now we can move on another grid based hexagonal beehive shape. Now to get onto making a hexagonal style shape, this does require a bit of experimentation and the values are more dependent on your meshes. For this, I will show you the shape we are making. We start off with a for loop but instead of numbers of instance, let's try another method, with more precise values. So create a grid x variable and same with the y. This requires two for loops as we want to separate the x and y. Drag out the instanced mesh so we can add an add instance node. Clean it up and then we add a make a transform. For this method, we will need a select vector which allows to choose between two vectors depending on a value just like a branch. We need to do this so we know when to start a new row. You will need to split both A and B so we can control the X and Y. Anyway now to do the boolean. We do this percentage sign which is called a modulus, which is the remainder after you have done a division. We need to make sure that it is 2. This is to check if that index is even or not. If it is an even number index, go with the set A location, if not, then go with the set B location. Ok now we need two variables that will be the spacing for X and Y. This can be optional but a nice value to control and you can always just set the value to zero if you don't want a space. We also need an offset float variable which will give it that beehive look. Get the spacing variable and then from the index we need to multiply it. Make sure it is an integer multiply float. We can get the output and that goes to A and B for the X location. Now do the same for the Y spacing, it goes to the A and B but for Y location. However for the BY, we need to change it so that we add an offset to it using the addition node. Compile and save and then go to the viewport and just see how it looks at the moment by adjusting the variables. For now, it will give some odd results. This is due to the shapes we use. We can use cubes but there are other meshes that we can use, like this hexagon which can be downloaded. I will share the source link in the description. It is quite difficult to get this right, take your time to experiment with it, it took me a while to get these values. I am slowly just adjusting the offset and spacing, you can go back and look at these values carefully. The main part was for you to learn some of the nodes that were used and experiment with the values afterwards. Finally, we are finished with this video, we have gone over the basics and these three in particular can help make you think about linking the similarities between methods or figuring out how to make other shapes. Hopefully this does help you and that you can use this for other uses. If you have some more shapes that you want me to go over, I will do so in the future. Comment down if you have some video suggestions or bugs and I will help you out. You can also try the audio visualizer tutorial and try using these as the visual. Also, one last thing, I would love to know how I could improve these videos. I do loads of different styles and eventually I want to just go with one style. 
same with the voice and even what I say, how quick or slow do you want me to go, how detailed do you want these videos, if you want more text or images on screen to aid what I say. Subscribe, share and see you later.